Hello everyone, welcome to tonight's class on basic figure drawing and gesture sketching using graphite. Um, I'm excited about this class because we've been doing a lot of figure drawing classes recently and we've got several more uh, figure drawing classes coming up um, in the, the coming months and weeks ahead. Um, but the gesture drawing class that we had um, a couple months ago, I believe, uh, yeah, in August was, well, yeah, even more than that. Anyway, it was a premium class uh, and it was a gesture drawing class using pen and ink. And so that class is not listed on YouTube with all the uh, free classes. And uh, as we move forward with figure drawing, I wanted to be able to reference uh, gesture drawing since it's such a fundamental of um, figure drawing. And so, yeah, I thought I'd do it again, but in graphite and we'd have it here in the, the list of classes on YouTube so I can refer back to it as we move forward. Um, and for those of you who have been with me in the um, Artist Loft series of classes uh, since the beginning, since uh, July 2021, you might remember uh, almost, well, it was a while back in February uh, this past this year, we did a class on um, using the wooden mannequin and we did uh, bodies in movement. And so our lovely moderator can, will drop the, the link to that class in the chat. And I'll definitely be referring back to that one tonight because we're gonna try to break down the uh, images that I provided for you in terms of basic shapes. And we're basically going to be turning this reference image of this model into a little bit more of a, a wooden mannequin. So you'll wanna check out that class if you're you know, struggling to um, break the, the body down into to basic shapes. The wooden mannequin comes already in basic shapes. So that's really helpful. You don't need the wooden mannequin for tonight's class, but um, just wanted to mention that at the start. I'll go ahead and switch to my tabletop view and finish going over supplies. So um, had this reference photo that I provided for tonight. We'll actually be using these same reference photos going forward in the two premium classes that are coming up in the next two weeks. And uh, those links should be in the chat or if you're watching this later on YouTube, you can uh, sign up for the two upcoming premium classes where it's uh, drawing a partial figure in graphite using uh, this same reference image. So I'll definitely be referring back to uh, tonight's class and those next couple of premium classes. You'll also want your our Artist Loft sketching pencils and eraser. And then I've got a large sketch pad. So it's the 11 by 14 sketch pad. And you can definitely work with a smaller sketch pad. But for figure drawing, I find bigger is better. And I'll talk about why the, as we get into it more. Um, even if you've got only the option of small paper or very big paper, I would go with very big paper. If you've got like some 18 by 24 paper, that would be um, even better. But I'm using 11 by 14 just, you know, because it fits a little easier on my desk. Uh, don't forget to tag your work from tonight with the hashtags make it with Michaels or Michaels classes and you can follow or tag me on Instagram at Adrian Hodge art. I'm also on Facebook Adrian Hodge fine art. There's a couple of my business cards that I'm always flashing on the screen. Okay, um, so yeah, I'll just show you the, the cover of the sketch pad that I have. It's the uh, 11 by 14 sketch pad there. Okay, the Artist Loft brand. All right, so by tonight's class, we will hopefully have at least two satisfactory sketches of these, um, this figure, two gesture sketches. And uh, we're gonna probably have a lot more than two, but these were just, you know, nice and, and fun to, to use as the example for the class. You will most likely have a sketch page that looks more like this, where it's just a lot of overlapping uh, scribble sketches and uh, stuff like that, and maybe 
a lot of stick figure sketches, that sort of thing. And then all of this is leading up to those two premium classes that I mentioned. So let me just show you the more final um, sketch of a partial figure that I have hiding here behind a few pages. Oh, here it is. Is in front. Oh yeah, we might also do something like this if that's easy enough to see. It's kind of the main part of the torso with some contour lines. If we don't get to that tonight, it'll be part of the uh, premium class. So in the premium class is a two-part class um and we'll be going very slowly step by step to sketch this photograph um just as a, a partial figure because i wanted to zoom in a bit on the face and um if we you know tried to squeeze the whole figure into this piece of paper we'd have to draw the face a little smaller and i wanted to spend some of the time on the face um or you know quite quite a bit of time on it uh to try to render satisfactorily. Um, so yeah, that's what's coming up. I hope you will sign up for that, the two-part premium class. Okay, so gesture drawing. Gesture drawing is a way to uh, capture movement in a figure. Um, like that other wooden mannequin class that I mentioned was called Bodies in Movement as an alternative title to uh, gesture drawing. And um, if you did attend the, the premium class on gesture drawing from a couple months ago, um, that one I provided 10, uh, or maybe it was more like nine reference images from this photo shoot with um, a local Austin model um, here in Austin where I'm based and uh, her name is Sion. And if you follow me on Instagram, I have a recent post where I've, I've tagged her and um, she's a very incredible uh, model who has been the muse for a number of local artists uh, here in Austin. And um, she's extremely talented and I always love working with her. So I captured a lot of images of Sion that I'm using for all of the, the series of figure drawing classes that we're in the middle of right now. And there's several more coming up. Um, there's one where we're gonna really um, focus on the face using pen and ink that is a, a three-part class starting at the end of December and then going into January. Um, but in the previous gesture drawing class that was premium that um, I mentioned, I provided nine gesture images of Sion in a number of uh, gesture poses. Tonight, we're just gonna focus on this one pose, um, but in that other class, there were nine of them and all of them. So when a, a model poses for a gesture pose, it's not the type of pose that the model can hold for more than uh, one or two minutes. It's usually a two minute uh, timed sketch because uh, it's a very dynamic pose. It's very activated. There's a lot of, you know, balancing happening usually. And, um, you know, when a model poses for more than, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes or an hour, they want to be in a comfortable or, you know, more seated position that allows them to relax a little bit. Um, if Sion had held this pose for longer than, you know, two minutes, that would start to become really uncomfortable for the human body, right? Because she's balancing on one toe, um, et cetera. So uh, a gesture pose usually has a lot of very activated movement in it. So that's where the stick figure comes in because we can capture that movement using um, just a stick figure. So the first thing we're gonna do is draw some stick figures um, of this, this particular sketch um, and try to capture the, the movement. But before we do that, we wanna loosen up because we want our sketches to be nice and loose. 
And um, by the way, anything can have a gesture. Back when I used to teach um, middle school and high school, I would do this exercise where I would put different items around the room and I would have students uh, go around and sketch just the center line of movement that they saw in, in that particular item. So let's say that we were looking at, um, you know, a, a pile of sheets, you know, the movement might be like that, right? Or if we were looking at a shirt hanging on a hook, then the main line of movement might be like that because most of the shirt is like falling in a big fold across one way. So it's very simple to find that kind of center line of gravity or center line of movement where the weight is distributed on an object or a form because everything that's existing, the three-dimensional form in space is taking up some sort of, you know, space and it has gravity and has a weight. And so we're looking for where that particular weight is lying. So I'm just going to grab an item off my shelf just to illustrate this real quick. So I've got this camera right here with, um, you know, with a little strap hanging off of it. So the strap is like ignoring the camera, just looking at the strap, it's got a weight to it, right? It's making like a figure eight right now. It's doing this. But one piece of the strap is kind of coming up in an upward direction. So it's sort of like that. And the weight of it, like where it's the heaviest would be right here. So I'm putting a nice thick line on where the heaviest part of the weight is is where it's hanging down. So see any, any object can have a weight and can have a gravity and we can find this like stick figure version of, of what we're looking at. So that's what we're looking for when we look at this photograph of Sion is where is that um, center line of gravity. Also, I just saw somebody's asking the, the question, the number one question I get asked is, what pencil am I using? Um, I'm using an 8B pencil, which is the darkest pencil in this uh, sketching set. Um, but the number one reason I'm using that pencil is so that you can see my lines on screen because I've been teaching on Zoom a long time now. And if I use the lighter pencils, which you might prefer to use um, so that it's easier to erase um, your lines, then um, they wouldn't show up on the Zoom. So you might want to use a, you know, a, a lighter pencil if you're having issues erase, erasing your lines. Um, okay, so just want to talk about the, the idea behind capturing movement with the stick figure before we dive in. Oh, and then one more thing to loosen up here, maybe, you know, look at some items around your room and see if you can you know, see that center line of movement or the center line of gravity where the weight is distributed on that form. And we're just looking for the main line or the, the line that jumps out at you the most. Um, okay, so don't get too bogged down with the fact that there's weight distributed in a, a number of places. Where is the most weight um, distributed on that, that form or that subject? Uh, the other thing I like to do to warm up before doing any uh, figure drawing or gesture drawing is just to do some quick figure eights on the side of my pencil. And if you want to grab your thickest B pencil in your set and do exactly what I'm doing, go for it. Um, everything we're doing tonight is pretty low risk. We're just sketching and practicing. We're practicing to be able to do gesture drawings, which are usually done in one to two minutes. So nobody is uh, should have any pressure on themselves to have, you know, something that needs to, to go in a frame or that needs to be perfect. So let go of any perfectionism you might be feeling right now. And we're just gonna scribble on the side of our pencils, get some nice loose figure eights scribbled on there. And that is really just to loosen up our muscles, loosen up our muscle memory. Okay. Once you're feeling nice and loose, 
So go back to this reference image and we're looking for that center line of gravity. So when I look at this, I see from the center of her hands, I see this line or let's go with the top of her head. Let's not even worry about the hands yet. The top of her head down to this toe is creating this just curved line like this, right? So her head is and her toe are in line, but then her hip is kind of uh, cocked to the side a little bit here. So there's this little indention on one side of her waist where it's like curved in, in that direction, right? So we've got a slight curve to this main line. So another way to get started with gesture drawing is to think about a lollipop shape. So like the head is at the top of the, the lollipop and then we've got the, the stick of the lollipop is the, uh, maybe the, you know, the center of the torso and whichever leg is holding most of the weight. And so you can draw a straight line down from the head to where is the tip of the toe on the leg that is holding most of the weight. Because when we're standing, it's unless we're standing in like a yoga mountain pose with our weight very evenly distributed on both feet, most of us are going to lean to one side or the other and put our weight on one foot more than the other. And anybody who's a mom who carries their kids around can easily tell you which side of their body they're holding that weight. <laughs> with both of my kids, when they, were, when they were little, my right arm was always way more sore than my left arm because that was the, the hip that I carried a kid on and I always leaned all my weight on my left foot but then I'm cocking my right hip out and I'm holding the kid on the, the right side anyway. So we usually are putting our, our weight on one side of our, our body more than the other. Okay, so that's our little lollipop stick. So when you get started drawing, um, you know, other gestures, look for what that, um, where that lollipop is. We're just focusing on this one gesture drawing because I just wanted to do a, a deep dive into gesture drawing so that I had a, a reference video to go back to for all these upcoming figure drawing classes. Okay. So once we've got that part of the, the lollipop image, we can start to put the rest of our, our stick figure in there. And if we've got the weight showing on that part of the, the figure, it's pretty easy to make a stick figure that feels like it has movement. So I'm looking at the line of the arms. And because I put so much weight and emphasis on that center line of gravity, now, you know, the arms, they, even if I just draw them as sticks, they feel like they have that same, same sort of weight and movement because the weight is actually in the, the main part of the, the body is where the, you know, the weight's being held. And then this, leg that's coming forward that's that's actually it's kind of representing both legs a little bit because the hip that's leaning out that way is the um on the left side her right hip but this is more the uh the right toe that i'm facing Okay, so I'm actually going to do, do this for the, the foot that's coming in front. Does that make sense? Because we can kind of see this other foot going behind right here. That might have been a little confusing. Um, yeah, because this hip is the one that's like coming out and then this leg comes forward and then this one is like curved behind it. So. All right, we can do that again. So we'll get the, let me see if I can fit this whole thing all on the, the screen too. So I don't have to move my paper up and down. 
So we've got the center line of gravity there. All right, so we're just going to draw a few stick figures like that representing the the basic movement that we're seeing in the form. Okay, so now let's talk about the overall shapes in the the body and the form that we're seeing here. Um, I've got two images here. I've got the inverted version of the the image, which is showing all of the light reversed, so all of the um, black shapes in the the photograph are showing up as white and all of the uh uh dark shapes are showing or i'm sorry all of the lighter shapes are showing up as dark there's nothing that's like absolutely searing white in the photograph which is why nothing is showing up absolutely black in the um the inverted version we've just got like a darker uh, gray happening there, then that's because there's nothing that's like the absence of, um, you know, of shadow, really, everything has a, a bit of a, a tint to it. Um, otherwise, we would be seeing some, I guess, like the, the lightest light would be where the lights hitting her arm right there, or um, yeah, and so that's showing up pretty dark gray right there on her arm or like some of these creases and the shadows are um, some of the where the lights hitting directly on the, the drapery is showing up pretty dark right here. Anyway, um, I really enjoy using photos like this uh, in all of my classes because it really helps me to see the the value shapes, the shapes of the light and the shapes of the dark. And mostly this image is going to come in handy whenever we're doing the premium classes over the next couple of weeks. But I just went ahead and included it in um, this class as well. Um, but it, it may help you to see the basic uh, shapes of the form as well. Um, so, and also this photo printed out kind of uh, grainy. So, um, which is kind of helpful honestly, because I don't want us focusing on too many details here. We're focusing on the basic shapes, but if you have the digital version of the photographs, you should be able to see things a lot more clearly, especially for the uh, premium classes that are coming up. Okay, so I'm just going to set that off to the side and grab my wooden mannequin here for a second and just uh, talk about um, the shapes of the um, the different body parts that we're going to be looking at here. So the head shape, we're looking at more of an egg shape or an oval shape that is more narrow on one side. Um, for the, the neck, we're looking at sort of a squashed little oval shape. For the torso, we're looking for um, a hexagon and then kind of another hexagon underneath that same thing with the, the hips it's like a reverse rounded hexagon shape and then some very rounded um, cylindrical shapes for the arms circles for the joints so shoulders elbows wrists uh, kneecaps etc we're looking for circles for those cylindrical shapes for the uh, legs, and then uh, for the hands and the, the feet, we're going to do uh, these very, I don't know how to describe these shapes that we're, we're seeing on the, it's sort of a cylinder that's been sliced at, a, at an angle here um, for the, like a shoehorn shape that you see, you know, and like the wooden shoehorns that you see to keep the shape of your shoes, your fancy Sunday shoes um, you know, in shape. So we're looking for those shapes for the, the feet and the, and the hands. So we're really not going to get super detailed with the, um, the figure tonight, because with a gesture drawing, again, if we're only drawing for one to two minutes on the clock, we don't have time to put um, a lot of details in there, like hair and uh, 
uh, eyes and you know uh, details but we are going to talk about the the main value that we're seeing in just a minute as another approach to gesture drawing and i saw somebody in the chat say that they attend uh, figure drawing classes that is wonderful um, i love attending figure drawing classes i actually hosted figure drawing classes for a number of years, uh, both in person and online on Zoom. Specifically during 2020, I was hosting a series of online figure drawing classes. And um, I highly recommend that you attend an actual figure drawing class. This class can be, you know, is has a lot of helpful fundamentals here. But drawing from a photograph is really nothing compared to, well, it's not nothing, but it's not the same as drawing a live model. Um, and there is something about the psychology, I think, of drawing from a live model that is extremely helpful, especially for beginners, because it forces you to keep going, especially if you're in person in a class and you're seated in front of that model. It's very hard to get up and leave <laughs> you know when you're looking somebody in the eye who you're you're trying to draw so um and that's the biggest uh hurdle that i think a lot of beginning artists face or when you're attempting to learn any new skill really it's not just art is that you know the urge to just give up to just leave to just say never mind i'm not doing this it's too hard right but when you're seated in the class drawing a live human being in front of you it's a little harder to to do that um so oh no i just smeared my graphite on on that image Okay, so yeah, go to a, a live figure drawing class if you can, or get on Zoom, or you know, look for um, you know some virtual figure drawing classes if you're not ready to to venture back out in person um, for a class. It's extremely helpful and um, yeah, makes a huge difference. Okay, so yeah, again, we're just looking at these basic shapes um, as we, we sketch here, and we can even tack this directly onto uh, the, the stick figure if that's helpful for you, if you're, you're struggling with the um, proportions. And I'm not going to go too deep into proportions here just because that class that I referenced uh, with the wooden model, I spent a lot of time in that class talking about basic uh, body proportions. So I'm not going to um, do that right now. But um, basically, we measure the, the human uh, form using the length of the head. And the um, average person is five to eight of their heads tall. So I like to use my pencil to just as a I'm just stick a post it note in here to find that page with that example. Um, so I use my pencil to measure the length of the head. So that's one head length right there. The second head length falls at the highest part of the uh, breastplate or at the nipple line. The third head length, and this is on the wooden mannequin, by the way, there is no um, such thing as a perfectly proportioned human being. We are all uh, unique individuals with different body shapes and types, and that's why we use that particular person's head to measure that particular person's body. And then we say that person is, you know, six and a half of their heads tall, or that person is eight of their heads tall. The wooden mannequin is, you know, kind of the, the standard, I guess, that we use in, in the art world, but not everyone is eight of their heads tall. So for example, I used six and a half because I'm six and a half of my heads tall. Um, okay, so, but on the wooden mannequin, we're using the eight head uh, model here. And so it's one head length for the head length. The second head length falls at the middle of the breastplate or the nipple line. The third head length is uh, typically the smallest part of the waist. And I'm using words like typically and approximately and on average, because again, everybody's different. Uh, fourth head length is at the uh, just below the, the hips um, or maybe at the, um, the crotch. Um, the fifth head length is 
mid thigh. Sixth head length is just below the kneecap. Seventh head length is uh, bottom of the, the leg. And then the eighth head length is like going to the, the tip of the toe. So it's like that would be eight head lengths with the wooden mannequin standing on its uh, tippy toes, right? Okay, so yeah, go check out that class if you missed it back in February on um, basic body proportions and capturing bodies and movement. I had a lot of reference images of the wooden mannequin that are actually still up on my Instagram. If you go to my Instagram, it says artist loft 101 there in the, the highlights at Adrian Hodge art. And I included all of the, uh, the images of the wooden mannequin posed in a number of gesture positions to practice in that class. And I didn't include that in the reference images for the night because I wanted people to have the wooden mannequin themselves. But then when the class came about, I realized I wanted to, you know, enable those who didn't have the wooden mannequin to still be able to practice. Um, so I in included some reference images and put them on my Instagram that night. Okay, so um, looking at our basic form here of Sion. So we've got the egg shape for the head. And the head is on a slight tilt here, um, which I just realized I drew it at the wrong angle. So you could get by with this whole class tonight using just the same pencil, um, but if you want to play around with a variety of pencils, be my guest. Um, but I'm just still using my 8B for those who are wondering. Because again, I want my lines to show up on the screen for you. Okay, so the head is, we're seeing a three quarter view of the head. So when we talk about the head, we're always looking at the very top of the head is the crown of the head where you would balance a book. And we can see the crown of Sion's head in this um, photograph, but I just like to illustrate this with my own head real quick. So imagine, you know, this is a book or whatever. I'm putting the piece of paper on top of my head. That's the crown of my head, right? It's way up there. It's not at my hairline. It's not right here. It's up here. It's where the book would balance or where that piece of paper would go to balance it on top of my head. So um, in all the facial proportions classes, I talk about that as well. Um, and that'll come up in the, the premium classes because we are gonna, that are coming up the next couple of weeks since we are gonna draw the, the face a little bit. And so the eye line is where I like to put that other little curved line. And so that's showing where the eye line is. And that's also showing you the tilt. And so her head is tilted slightly down. So we can see the crown of the head right there. And we can see, um, you know, that curved line and that things are curving down. So the nose would be slightly curved down, the lips would be slightly curved down, the eyes would be slightly curved down, et cetera. But we're not going too far into the, the facial figure features tonight. Okay, so and then we've got a little circle for the, the neck. And then we're looking at for these lines of like little lines of, of gravity in addition to that center line of gravity. So feel free to draw on your photograph if you've got it there in front of you. So we've got this diagonal line underneath the um, underneath the head where the shoulders are lined up. Um, we've also got this line right here where the, the hands are lined up. They're almost right in line with the shoulders mirroring the, the flatness of the shoulders there. Okay, and then there's that little, the way she's cocked her hips. So we've got a little twist happening there. And so the hips are, the line for the hips is a diagonal line going down in that direction. Um, same thing with the uh, 
the bottom of the hips at the crotch line. Okay, so we've got this, these lines sort of stacked on top of each other. Then we've got another twist happening because this leg is going behind that leg and the knees are lined up like this. And then the ankles are not lined up, but there is another little straight line that we can illustrate where the back of the foot on this side, you can see it a little better in the, the negative uh, photo. The backs of the foot, the heels are making a little line right there where they're, they're lined up, okay? And then we can do just a nice horizontal line at the bottom to show where the toes are. So let's see, that is not quite, they're not really in line with all of the head lengths, but it's close. Um, and Sion is uh, close to eight of her heads tall, I believe. I broke her, her head lengths down in the, the other premium class uh, on gesture drawing. Let's see, she's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So yeah, she's a little over seven of her heads tall from the crown of her head to the tip of her toe, standing on her toes like that. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and put those lines in there because they'll help us line up all these shapes. So we've got that line for the uh, shoulders. Let's go ahead and put this line up here for the and this is going real slow for a gesture class right now, for a gesture drawing right now. Um, like I said, in a gesture drawing, you've got one to two minutes to do this. So we're really doing a slow deep dive into uh, how you would approach a gesture here. If you're in a figure drawing class and you're trying to do this with the model in a gesture pose, you're not gonna get very far. Um, but maybe these helpful tips can be applied or not, maybe they can definitely be applied in a lot faster fashion, right? Okay. So this is why I wanted to use this big paper because we're definitely using this whole sheet of paper. And if we're, uh, oh, and the reason behind not wanting to use smaller paper or draw small is that it's just um, people have a tendency to draw smaller when they're in the beginning phase of their, their drawing careers because they, I think all my years of teaching younger kids, I noticed the younger kids do it a lot and some and adults too um, when they're first starting out. And I think the psychology behind it is is that it will be easier and maybe we're trying to hide the things about our drawing that we're not super happy with but it's actually easier to draw big because when it's bigger you can erase easier you can get in there and change something a little easier you're not having all this like complicated overlapping happening um, and you're not trying to like squeeze everything in so really practice drawing big, take up some space. Don't be afraid to take up some space in your sketchbook. It's just paper. Um, okay, so we've got the flat of the hands right there and we're just gonna draw those little, little disc shapes, right? Um, for the hands. And then we wanna line for those arms and we want those arms to have a little joint for the wrist and a joint for the elbow. And let's look at where all those lines line up in relationship to each other. Okay, and then we're looking for this hexagon shape, or if you wanna kind of do that half circle shape first, and then add the hexagon shape on top of it for the top part of the, the torso. And we'll go ahead and finish the, we need the shoulders right here. Shoulders are kind of down a little bit. We've got this, yeah. The shoulder joint is below. Well, no, it's kind of half up there too. On the wooden mannequin, we would have this little curve 
curved line right here, right? If I have time, I'm going to go into the, the contours like I showed you on that, that one thing. But if not, that'll just be a teaser to get y'all to sign up for that premium class because I'm definitely going to start with that in the premium class, breaking down the, the contour lines of these shapes. OK, so then we're going to reverse that shape and do the same sort of hexagon shape, but we want it to be rounded. And we want everything to be lining up with those, those little guidelines that we created for ourselves. Okay, and then we've got the hip joints here. And then we've got a cylinder shape for that front leg and another cylinder shape the back leg. We can see a little bit of that one knee before it goes behind the front knee. And then we've got the ankle. Oh, the ankles were supposed to be lined up right there. I might have squeezed things in a little too much. And then the foot. And then we're only seeing the back part of that other foot. So something like that. And then if you want to add the um, the leotard in there on top, uh, feel free. Okay, so yeah, let's go ahead. We've got 15 minutes here. Well, I also want to talk about the other approach to looking at value shapes, because there's another way to do gestures, which is my favorite way. And I'm in a figure drawing class to sketch uh, the model. I usually will not um, sketch in terms of the shapes like that, although that can be really helpful um, when you're sketching from a gesture pose. Um, but the way that I find I'm usually the most satisfied with is looking at the shapes of the light and the shapes of the dark. And this is what we focused on in the other uh, gesture drawing class, the premium class in pen and ink. And I'll just show you some of those in pen and ink here from that class, if I can flip to them really quickly. Give me just a moment. Okay, so these were from the gesture drawing class in pen and ink, and we really, you know, focused on the same things as tonight using a variety of poses, and I actually used a timer, and we spent a lot of time beforehand talking about, um, you know, everything we've talked about in tonight's class, um, but then I set a timer at the end of the class, and using the brush pen, we just tried to quickly capture the two um, uh, parts of the figure that are standing out in black, and that is her hair and the leotard. And we used the, the leotard and the ideas of movement to, um, to capture the, the basic form and the, the movement here. So that was a really um, fun class. And I love approaching uh, gesture drawing in this way because the results are usually very satisfying and they have a certain quality to them that I think is a little more fun than, um, you know, just drawing the, the basic shapes. But the shapes can really help if you're struggling, you know, to, to see the, the, if you're struggling with proportions to practice that way. Um, but yeah, let's, let's look at just the main um shadows and the areas of dark so we've got this value scale in any um any form that we're looking at we're looking at the dark and light of the form and we've got a value scale from zero to ten so zero being the blank paper and ten being the absolute black so we've got blank to black 
okay? And so if we're talking about the value scale that our pencil will give us on the side with this 8B pencil, I can get almost solid black here if I really put a lot of pressure on the pencil. And then if I just drag that out and pull up on my pressure, and I've had so many classes where I've talked about value in the, this series, um, you can just search artist loft and value and you'll, you'll see a huge variety of classes over the past uh, year and some change on that. Um, if I'm gonna switch to my H pencil here for some of the lighter values, so I did all that with the 2B, or with the 8B, sorry, and then with the 2H, I can get my lightest values, and then it would fade to my absence of a color, right, the, the blank paper. Um, so I just used the side of my pencil, and I just used a very even pressure and just pulled up on the, uh, the pressure. So I saw somebody say, how did you do that? Years of practice to be able to do it that quickly. Um, okay, so where are we seeing absolute black in this photograph? And where are we seeing like a uh, five on the value scale or, um, you know, a two or three or uh, four on the value scale, right? It's most of all of these lighter areas are more of a two, three, four, value and then we've got some fives and some sixes definitely in some areas and then it just kind of jumps to the absolute black of uh, the hair and the leotard right so we can really focus on those shapes of shadows and shapes of light and with all this knowledge of the movement of the form we can capture a really fun uh, gesture of you know one to two minute you know, timed drawing of a model um, without needing to, you know, drive ourselves nuts trying to capture all the, the body proportions. So we've got 12 minutes left on the clock here and let's just dive in and just see what we can do using the side of the pencil and thinking about those darkest values. We might have to do this a few times to, to capture this in a way that feels fun to us. But so I'm looking at some of those lighter shadows, like the lighter shadow on the neck here. Um, but I'm just gonna kind of go for it with the leotard and see if I can. Also, I like to do kind of a scribble sketchy thing when I, I'm like in a, a live figure drawing class and the models straining to hose uh, to hold a very dynamic pose like that. This is what I do. I just look at where that main those main shadows are. And try to capture something fun and fleeting. And usually those end up being my favorite sketches are the ones where I haven't done all that much to it. Actually, I'm gonna go across the room really quickly and grab my kitchen timer and let's do this a couple more times and we'll time it at, at a minute and see what we can do with just a brief amount of time. I like using these this timer so I can see the time. So let's put two minutes on the clock and do that again. This is the nice thing about using the same image over and over again here is we've studied this image quite a bit and maybe that'll make it a little easier. You can go ahead and put, you know, the you can put as much detail into these as you want, but I try to make the, the goal of the, the two minutes to capture those darkest shadowy shapes. And they're not really shadows, it's the leotard and the hair. <laughs> but if you have time before this timer goes off to put any of those other shadows in, you can. But I think just that minimalism can really 
really give you a nice end product pretty quickly. So I'm using the side of my pencil. The very first class that we had in this series uh, called Intro to Graphite and Drawing Forms, I talk about the what I'm doing, drawn on the side of the pencil right now. So if you are just joining us, you might go check out that class. Okay, and then now, since there's a little bit of time left, I'll look at some of these other shadows that are jumping out at me, like the shadow on the side of the arm. I'm not doing a stick figure thing here. I'm drawing the shadows on the sides of the arms. All right, so that was two minutes. Kind of liked my other one better with just one minute. All right, let's do that again with one minute on the clock. Maybe we'll look at the, the reverse of the image first. So if you're focusing on the In the dark shadows, everywhere where it's light in this image, all the white areas are where the, the absolute black is. Adrian, somebody is asking if you can go back over the legs. Oh, um, sure. Let's wait till this minute is up right here and then I'll focus on the legs for a minute or two. Okay, didn't quite get as far on that one. I like a two minute gesture. A minute just goes so fast. Okay, um, yeah, let's focus on the legs real quick. Um, I'm gonna set another timer for myself just since we're getting near the end of the class here. Okay, so I'm just gonna start since my paper, my screen only lets me go so far here, drawing the figure bigger. So here's where the hips are kind of caught to the side, right? And we've got that. So that's the waist, the line for the waist where it curves up like that. This side is like more of a straight line, right? And this is the where the hips turned in, okay? And so if I were to sketch the, the leotard, across that, we're looking at something like this. Right. And so we've got the front leg. And then the kneecap. And then the leg in the back is going behind the front leg. And we're only seeing partial kneecap right there. And we've got the little line right there, the bikini line. All right, let's just talk about the contours here because I think that might be what what you might be struggling with. So think about the elevational path. Oh, it was two minutes that goes so fast. Um, you know, the leg is 
like a cylinder shape. And so we've got this curved, if we're talking about like a cylinder on a Coke can, depends which direction we're looking at the Coke can. Let's say we're looking at the top of the Coke can, then we've got a curved horizontal axis going down the length of the, the Coke can. And then we've got straight line, right? On the cylinder. Okay, but on a leg, cylindrical, but it gets a little narrow in some areas. So it's not a, and then also it's the angle that we're looking at it. So the shadow kind of falls along this elevational path. So we've got uh, a vertical line that's not completely straight. It follows the curve where it curves in. And then this angle on the horizontal axis kind of curves down like that. And so same thing on the front leg. It's a little more facing the viewer. So that line is maybe not as dipped down. But we've got something like that. And then I'm drawing so big, I'm about to go off the page here. Let me go back to, well, let me see how much I can squeeze in here. And then the calf. Got a similar situation. And the kneecap is more of a, a circle shape right there. All right, so those are like the contours of the legs as I'm seeing them. And then I can't quite fit the foot in here. Let me kind of draw it off to the side, I'm like breaking the body down into a few parts here. But at the, the foot, we've got this sort of shape. She's standing on the toes. seeing it a little bit of like a side view. We just had a premium class last week on drawing feet, by the way. Okay, so we're looking at something like that for the toes. So the toes are sticking out like that. And then we've got these contours. All right, those are the, the basic shapes there. Hope that was helpful. I'll go back to my other example here before we end. Oh, I lost my placeholder. Okay, so yeah, we're just talking about basic shapes tonight. We didn't go into too much detail, but if you want more detail of this photograph, we're actually not going to talk about the legs in the, the next week's, the two next week classes, the premium classes, because like I said, I couldn't um, fit it all onto this big, this piece of paper and be able to zoom in as well. So I kind of cut everything off just below. Uh, just above the kneecaps here, but we'll be at least talking about half the legs in that premium class and definitely emphasizing the torso um, and all that. All right, well, we have, we're at the end of the hour, but I, I would love to see some examples real quick if uh, people have a minute to stick around and hold up uh, your sketches from tonight. I'd love to see what your work from this evening. Ooh, I'm seeing some lovely gesture sketches there. Awesome. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Look at that weight on that stick figure. I love it. Oh, hold it back a little bit. It's a little blurry. Oh, but your background's blurred. Uh, that's always tricky. <laughs> With the zoom blurred background. Oh, look at those. Very nice. Yeah, I got some real muscle going there on those shadows. Oh, and that, that 
uh, shape sketch to the left, it's very strong. I'm really feeling that weight on the, the twist and the hips. Very nice. Awesome. Oh, those are lovely. Delicate touch there with your, your graphite. Very nice. All right. Well, I don't want to go too far into uh, the hour, but thank you so much. Great work, everyone. Um, if you didn't get a chance to share yours, feel free to, uh, you know, send it to me on Instagram or post it and tag your work. Uh, make it with Michael's or Michael's classes and you can tag me so I'll be sure to see it. You can share it in an Instagram story if you don't want to permanently post it. Thank you all so much. Have a uh, wonderful evening. And yeah, I'm not doing the, the Q and A's anymore. I saw Kylie asking that. Um, I've got a day job working for Meta now for their open arts program, um, which is taking up a lot of my bandwidth. So unfortunately still still doing these and I'm happy to still do it, but just not doing those uh, Q and A's after the classes anymore. Um, it's been a almost 12 hour day for me. So y'all have a great evening. Thank you so much. Um, have a great night. Hopefully I'll see you next week in those premium classes. Good night, everyone.